Hello and welcome. Sorry for the delay, I was relocating to London and it took quite a while in order for me to set up. I have received a lot of demands from people who were interested by knowing how to interact from contract to contract. So this is what we will do now in this lesson. So we'll create a contract, we'll name it the color contract and this contract will call the cold contract. So in the cold contract we will have some variables that we would like to retrieve from the color contract. So we will have a string and a integer. So uint number and a string, um, let's say words. Okay, so like in any normal contract, we will need to create a getter for those variables and get words. Okay, for the moment, we'll just use the get number. So this will return the number, so return number, and this will return the words. Okay, so now we have this contract. So let's say it's, it's your contract, you have some data inside it, but you want to retrieve that data from another contract. So how would you do it? So the first way is the most easy one, is when you deploy the both of the contracts at the same time. So you haven't deployed a cold contract before. So that way, because our Solidity code knows about this contract, because it is defined here, we can just declare it like that to the cold new cold contract. And basically that means that we are initializing another contract from that contract. So we are using our color contract. When it will be deployed, we create a cold contract and the type of the variable needs to be of type cold contract. And then we'll create some getters. So the first function will be function um, get get number. Let's keep the same names. And if you are familiar with object-oriented languages, it is very easy to call a function from another contract simply to something like be called to be called dot and you get the name of the function so get number and that's all so if we deploy the caller contract now you can see that you are able to get the value from another contract now with strings strings are very particular because th uh, those are dynamic arrays basically and you cannot return them outside of the contract so it's not possible but what we can do, so let's let's first try it. Function get words, okay? And now it's saying that the return argument type inaccessible dynamic type is not implicitly convertible to expected type. So the only way to actually send some string data from a contract to contract is to use a byte 32 format. So we need to declare it in byte 32. And for those who don't know, I have a little window here, and this is basically a converter from hex to string and to string to hex. So if we have a h, we can convert it in hexadecimal format. And this is basically the binary, but computers use the hexadecimal format so to represent binary data. So in fact, you receive a binary number, but it is uh, Solidity will convert it into hexadecimal number. So if we have something like hello world in hexadecimal, we will have that number. So let's get back to the contract and we have declared it as a byte 32. Now we need to return it as a byte 32. And here we need to return it as a byte 32 as well. So now we can deploy again this contract and we have number 42 from the this variable and we have this hexadecimal number for hello world and you see that it's the same number so if i just copy and paste it in hex to string converter you get hello world so this is how you transfer strings from contract to contract now i'm wondering if i can do something uh, specific so what if i want to return the string but i i want to convert it to a string is it possible is it type conversion not allowed. No, it's not possible. So basically, yeah, you have to return it as a byte 32 and you have to convert your byte 32 format into string in your application. 
Okay, so now let's say that the code contract is already deployed on the blockchain. So let's say you have a use case where you already have a contract deployed and you've incorporated a logic that allows for future contract to interact with that contract. But yeah, how would you do it? So let's say that this contract is already deployed. So I will deploy it now, uh, code contract create. So this is on the blockchain. It has its own address and stuff. If we create our caller contract like that, we will spawn a new version of the contract. So how would you talk to that contract on the blockchain in particular? Well, there's one way. Because we have deployed that contract already, we have the address. So we will copy it. And instead of doing new, we'll just get rid of the keyword new and paste the address in the parentheses. So that means we are declaring a to be called contract of type called contract. And we say that the called contract is actually not a new instance. The called contract is actually already on the blockchain and it has its address its own address and we give the address so that way you are able to contact a contract that has been already deployed on the blockchain but you need the source code base source code of the contract if you get rid of that you will get an error so you need to conserve the source code of the contract but its state can be changed and the last state will be fetched from the blockchain with that address so the contract is already deployed so let's create our color contract and you see that it's the same thing it's 42 and and hello world in bytes so yeah that worked and in order to be sure that it worked we'll actually make a setter so now it's uh, very straightforward we'll deploy the code contract first we'll deploy the con code contract first okay so by default it's 42 but we will change it to 56 and now it's 56 now we will take the address of the contract on the blockchain, we'll copy it and paste it here. That means that when we will try to get the number of our already deployed contract, we'll not get 42, we'll get 56 because we will get the last state of the contract. So we will deploy our color contract. And what we got, we got 56, it's working. So, Thank you again for following this channel, for subscribing. And yeah, I hope that I will make more tutorials very soon. But for the time being, I just I will just make those kind of poor quality tutorials. But, but I know you really want to learn. So thank you and see you in the next lesson.